Hey everybody. Welcome to Fly Tying Monday. I have some I have some bad news for for all of you. Um Julie is not here today. She had uh, her car battery's okay this week, but she had <laughs> she had another she had another conflict. So and Phil isn't here, but we have the uh amazing Drew Nisbet uh who is the uh, one of my fishing buddies and one of the great one of the great anglers on the Orvis Step and is the community manager for hunting and fishing. If you don't know Drew, Drew, why don't you pop in and say hi to people? Hey there, everybody. Happy to be here. And we were just talking fishing, and um, so Drew's going to be uh, reading out the questions to me or uh, posting links. And Drew, you could probably post the. Um, do you have the pattern description? To post okay um i made a change <laughs> as usual i made a change um i uh, when i sent out the material list i said i was going to make the thorax out of peacock curl and then i got to i got to looking at this fly and everything except the peacock curl in the version i'm going to tie today is a, a synthetic material so i figured well Let's tie the whole thing synthetic. Um, it's easier uh, with the rubber legs I'm using and uh, dubbing technique. It's easier, probably more durable, and it's all synthetic. So we're going to tie a, a totally synthetic copper john today. And welcome, everybody. I see some familiar names, and I see I, th I, see, I think some new some new names there. If you're new, give us a shout out in the comments because um, we love having new people here. And, and if you're new to Fly Tying Mondays, welcome. We, uh, we go through a fly. We do it live. We make mistakes. I use that as the editorial we. We screw up. And um, we have some fun. People tease me. And, ah, Tags 27, first time. Great. I see some people already told me that I beat Flagler today. Well, that's good. Uh, actually, once a month, I, I have a, a tie-off with uh, one of the greatest fly ties around, Tim Flagler. And that's why people are voting for, for me today instead of Flagler, because Flagler isn't here. And by the way, uh, February's tie-off is going to be on a Wednesday. I think it's the 13th or something. It's not going to be on a Monday because Tim's got a busy travel schedule. So uh, we'll post that uh, when we have it, when we have it down. We don't, we haven't decided what fly we're going to tie. Anyway, today we are going to tie a red Copper John with rubber legs. Why are we going to tie it in red? Well, uh, the Copper John is a is an amazingly effective nymph, and you can fish it with a Euro rig. You can fish it with an indicator. You can fish it sight fishing without any junk on your leader. Uh, you can fish it lots and lots of ways, and it it just works. Uh, and uh, a few years ago, I tied up Copper Johns in a whole bunch of colors. I tie them in black and purple and pink and red and orange and chartreuse, uh, just varying the, the body color because ultra wire comes in uh, these great, all these great colors. And um, I fished them all and I tried them out and the red one really worked better for me than, than any other color. Now, why red? Well, I, I, I have no idea. You have to ask the fish. This thing looks like a a mayfly or a stonefly nymph. There are no red mayfly or stonefly nymphs that I'm aware of. Um, there are red midge larvae, but this thing does not look like a midge larva at all. So why red? I don't know, but the fish like it. And so I stuck to red and uh, red's, red's my go-to fly. So the red copper john is... Um, is what I use. Now you can you can tie this in any color you want by varying the color of ultra wire. And if you, I was just talking to Drew, and Drew loves purple, and Drew likes the uh, purple copper John. 
Um, so try some purple, try some yellow, try some brown, try some black. And the original original one has a copper body, obviously the copper John. Um, but, you, you know, you can get ultra wire in, in lots and lots of different colors. So uh, play around with it and experiment uh, with the colors on this thing. And also, um, I don't particularly like tying with biots. Uh, I, I don't, they don't look like nymph tails is for, I don't like biots for tails. They don't look like nymph tails. They're flat, they're wide. Um, and they're a pain to tie in and, uh, rubber, rubber legs are much easier to tie in. And, uh, the partridge hackle that's used on a traditional copper John is fairly fragile and it's got to be a really expensive material. So I started tying these with rubber legs and I think they give even better action in the water and, uh, it's cheaper, more durable. So that's the way we're going to tie it today. So it's a little bit variation on the on the standard Copper John. Um, how do you fish this fly? Generally, dead drift is the best. Whether you, uh, this is my go-to fly in a in a dry dropper. If I'm going to fish a big a big a tractor dry fly with a nymph hung on it, uh, generally, if I have any in my box, I'm going to put a size 14 or a 16 red copper john on the dry dropper hopper dropper uh chubby chernobyl dropper uh stimulator dropper any you know any high floating dry fly and particularly in small streams i find this um i find this to be a to be a great fly in a in a you know 12 14 16 usually i'll go to a 14 or a 16. um this is an american fly it was developed by a gentleman named John Barr. He's uh, a dentist. I think he's retired now, but uh, as a dentist from Colorado, great guy, great fly tire, great angler. Um, and um, John has come up with lots and lots of different patterns, but uh, we've tied one of his before, the Barr Emerger. Uh, but uh, John Barr developed this fly. Coincidentally, a guy, um, another friend of mine named Bob White, who is uh, an artist, a well-known uh, sporting artist and a uh, guide in Alaska, came up with a fly that was very, very similar, totally uh, independent of John Barr. Uh, and they, he called it a copper bob. And uh, it's, it's a little bit different, but um, I don't remember exactly what it is, but very similar to the copper John. So uh, both of these guys, both these great anglers came up with, um, came up with this fly. Uh, Herb says I'm cutting in and out. Am I cutting in and out on anyone else? Uh, just, uh, it may be on your end, Herb. It may be your, your streaming. Um, I'm broadcasting from a, uh, fiber optic, uh, uh, hardwired. So I shouldn't be cutting in and out either audio or video, but, uh, everybody else says no. Okay, Herb. Sorry. It's up to you to fix it. <laughs> try, um, maybe try reloading, reloading the page or something. Okay. Shall we start? Any questions before I start? No. Okay. Let's start. That's what it's going to look like. I'm going to tie this on a, uh, 2x long nymph hook. You can tie it on any hook you want. Tie it on a jig hook if you want. I like it on a standard nymph hook. Even though I do fish it uh, Euro style sometimes. Um, I'm going to tie it today on a, on a standard nymph hook. Get that a little brighter there. Make sure it's in focus. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to take the hook out of the vise. The first thing I'm going to do is um, put a bead on the hook. And I'll show you a couple cool tools. Both of these come from Hairline. And the first tool is 
a bead gauge. It's a combination bead gauge and uh, I'm going to show you this. Actually, I'm going to show you this thing first. This is a bead threader. And what you can do, what you do is you get your bead. If I can show you this, get your bead up beyond this spring here. It's kind of tough to do this in front of the camera. You get your bead up here and you got your, all your beads threaded on this thing. And you take your hook, you could do this in the vise too. And you just push the bead off the top and then it goes right on the hook. Of course, you have to thread them on the right way. You want the, the small end of the bead toward the eye of the hook. But that's pretty cool, um, a bead threader. I think these are available in some Orvis stores. And then this is a bead gauge. It's also got a hackle gauge right here. Uh, but it's a bead gauge. And, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of, there's some variation in beads um, depending on how much paint is on the bead or, you know, just manufacturing. But uh, if you put this on, on the gauge here and you roll it down until it just sinks in to the slot, that's the bead size. So this is a 764 size bead. And then you pull it out and stick it on your hook or whatever. But that's a that's a great little tool and it hangs on your vise. And so you can you can and it's got both millimeters and fractions there and a hackle gauge. So it's a pretty cool tool. Anyway, I have my bead on my hook. So I'll bring that over to the vise. And I'm gonna, oops. I'm gonna take some non-toxic wire. It's a fairly small diameter. I, I can't remember what diameter it is, but it's the smaller diameter. And to help hold the bead on there and to give it some extra weight, I'm going to uh, wind some wind some wire on there, and I'm going to wind it backwards. I'm going to wind it toward me instead of away from me. This is something I learned from uh, somebody that came into the podcast uh, request line with a tip. And if you wind it away from me or toward you like that, I broke that. I broke that front end, then I'll jam it into the bead. And I want the wire to be about half the shank. But by doing this this way, actually, I did it wrong. Winding it toward me. I get easily confused. Shove it into the bead. Ah, I didn't have quite enough there. I'll take a few more turns. This wire is such a pain to work with. Anyway, that's enough there. Break it off if you can close to there. You can either snip it or you can just push it with your push it with your finger so that it smooths onto there. But now, by winding it that way, when you wind your thread, it's going to push the wire away from the thread, and it's not going to be opposing the thread. So it's going to it's going to lay down. The thread's going to lay down on top of there easier. You have to really you have to really do it to understand what I'm talking about here. And then I'm going to start my thread right behind the wire. To kind of hold it in place. And then you want to crisscross over this thorax a few times to get it in place. If you don't, things will tend to slip when you uh, tie your fly. 
So there we go so far. So good. Any questions at this point, Drew? Sorry, trying to get back on there. Um, Ken would just like you to uh, tell folks again where you can get that gauge from. Uh, it's well, it's 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 made it's made by Hairline, uh, which it, you can't buy directly from. The Orvis store in Manchester has some. Uh, we don't have it on our website, but uh, a lot of fly tying dealers should have it. If you just uh, if you just Google hairline uh, hairline Keo hook and bead gauge, you should be able to find it. But I know the Orvis store in Manchester has some. If, if uh, people want to call there, they can get one from there. And then one more question: Do you prefer tungsten or brass beads on this fly? Tungsten. I always use tungsten beads. Always, always. If you're going to put a bead on it, you're putting it on to get some weight. And if I don't want quite as much weight, I'll just put a smaller tungsten bead on there. But um, I don't I don't use brass beads much anymore. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is the tail. And I like this stuff, again, from Hairline, uh, small life flex. But you can you can use any fine brown rubber leg that you have. Uh, this is a spandex, and um, I really like this material. So it's small life flex, and I'm going to cut a piece of that, and then I'm just going to cut a small piece of it, about that big. You could make a little smaller too. And then put the other piece aside and you can tie a bunch of other flies with it. And then I am going to fold, fold this piece of rubber around the thread like so. Try to center it and then bring it down to the hook and just start winding back over that rubber. And the nice thing about making these tails is that they almost always come out perfect. Unlike tying tails with biats, which I find is a royal pain to try to get them to look right. Um, you can see those look pretty good. And I didn't, I didn't spend much time fussing with them. And they're going to wiggle a little bit and they're durable. And I'm going to cut them off fairly short. Now that's an easy tail. Then I'm going to get my uh, body wire. And I'm using ultra wire. And I'm using the red color. And it's the brassy size. It's it, You'll see it labeled BR on the spool. Um, it's kind of a medium size. They call it brassy size. Um, this says hot orange, but it looks red to me. And I'm just going to take a piece of wire, enough for a few flies. And you can just break this stuff. You don't have to cut it right here. So now I've got my piece of uh, wire. And again, you can use any color you want. And first, I'm going to make sure, put a little pressure on those tails, make sure they're secure. And then I'm going to wind forward about to where the lead or the, the wire ended. And I'm going to place this right on top. And I'm going to carefully come back. And, and as opposed to tying a rib, I like to keep this right on top. If it, if it falls to one side, your body will get look a little lumpy. And fish will not take nymphs with lumpy bodies. Never, ever will they take fl flies with lumpy bodies. I'm just kidding. It doesn't really matter. It only matters to us. And then I'm going to come forward and I'm going to just wind forward 
And then when I get up to here, I'm going to build up a little bit of a taper. You don't need to flatten your thread or anything here, but um, this fly looks looks better and looks more natural with a bit of a taper to it. So I'm going back and forth, but I'm not going all the way into the back. I find to to um, to get a good taper, it's best if you if you look at the fly from the top. Gives you a better gives you a better perspective of that. So I got a little bit of a taper there. Not much. You could you could make it a thicker taper if you wanted to. Oh, I'm using um, 8 -0 thread on this fly, 8 -0 black thread. And then to wind your body to make it look neat, you're going to take that first turn carefully right up against the tails, and then you're going to kind of push it to the, to the, to the left. And each subsequent turn, you want to angle it a little bit to the left and push it up against the turn preceding it. And that will give you a nice even body without any gaps in it. Not that it matters to the fish, but it does to us. Nobody's going to see your fly as close as you're seeing mine including the fish because they only get a quick look at it as it drifts tumbles by in the water you want to come to about the midpoint of your hook with the body because most mayflies and stoneflies are about half uh, abdomen and half thorax and then take a couple turns three turns or so over the top of that wire and then uh, you can either cut it with a little pair of wire cutters or snips or you can helicopter it helicoptering is just twisting it around and around till it breaks usually breaks in the right spot this is why i like to usually cut it because sometimes it takes a while to helicopter it jeez that's really Good strong wire. There we go. Okay. So that broke off. And take a couple of turns just to make sure that's secure. And that wire doesn't need any, any glue or anything else on it. It's super durable. It's wire. Wire is durable. Any questions so far, Drew? Tom, what are some of the benefits of using a material like LifeFlex as opposed to Biots? It's uh, easier to tie with. It's more durable. And I think it looks more like tails on a mayfly or stonefly than Biots. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I don't like Biot tails at all. I just don't care for them. Any other questions? There was a super glue question, but I think you answered it uh, pretty, pretty well. Yeah, don't need any. Don't need any glue. If if you're tying this properly, you don't need any glue till the end. Okay. Now I'm going to take. I'm going to uh, take my. Um, this is a, a pearlescent tinsel. You can use a, a strand of flashaboo. Any flashy material will work. This is going to be kind of the split in the wing case. It looks like a, it has a little flash and looks like a, a split to the wing case. This happens to be a pearlescent tinsel, but again, you could use a piece of flashaboo. And I'm going to cut a piece of this or break it. It'll break too. And this, this piece of pearlescent tinsel is a little thick for what I want for that little stripe that goes across the wing case. So if you gently and carefully pull on this, you can make it a little narrower. It's fairly flexible. So I'm pulling that and it's hard to see, but it stretches a little bit before it breaks. And that gives you, gives you a little bit finer piece. You can see I don't, know, I don't know how well you can see it here compared to the way it started. It's quite a bit thinner. And that's just because I stretched it. 
because I don't want I don't want it that that piece that thick. I just want a little little flashy stripe there. And then I'm going to place this on top and I'm going to carefully place it so that it sits right on the top and if it doesn't quite go where you want it you can manipulate it a little bit so that it's right centered on top of the hook once it's centered come forward a few turns and snip it off and get that out of the way in your material clip or I actually have a material clip here that I could use. Just get that out of the way. It's going to stay out of the way for a while. And you can see it's pretty much straight on top, I think. Yeah, close enough. Now I'm going to uh, make the wing case. And this is, uh, this is made from... Uh, Thin skin, black. You could use any, probably any plastic stretchy material, but I'm going to use thin skin. And um, you want this, you want this wing case to be about uh, a, a little bit less than a hook gap in width. So uh, what I do is I hold it up to the, hold it up to the hook and kind of eyeball it and then i take my a long pair of scissors and you want a long pair of scissors so that you can get a nice straight even cut um tim flagler cuts us with a paper cutter so he gets a nice flat cut uh, but i just use a, a long pair of scissors to cut it and i've already got a piece cut of that thin skin and there's a backing on this thin skin that you just peel away Sometimes it, it's white. Sometimes it, it doesn't come off so easily, but sometimes it peels right off. Depends on how old it is, I think. And then I'm going to take my piece of thin skin and just cut, just cut a little taper to it at one end. Oh, not quite. just makes it easier to tie in just kind of cut it to a point and then start this not quite up to the bead because you're going to put a lot be putting a lot of stuff in there so back it off a little bit from the bead and then just keep it keeping it on top of the hook pull it straight back and just come back and you want to just keep checking until you're right tight up against that wire body. Hey there, Tom. It looks like we lost focus on the fly. Okay. Well, yeah. Terrible. How's that? Should be good now. Get that out of the way. Now I'm going to, um, the original fly had peacock hurl, but again, I'm going full synthetic here. Not that I have anything against natural materials. I love natural materials, but I figured I'd make this all synthetic. And ice dubbing in this peacock color looks so close to peacock hurl. It's, it's just amazing. And uh, it's much more durable than peacock hurl. And you can barely, barely tell the difference if you dub and wind this right from uh you barely tell the difference between ice dub peacock and peacock curl it's a really good color you can see it has that peacock sheen to it and i'm going to i'm going to move this camera so that you can see it because i'm going to be beyond where i'm focusing so I'll show you doing it here, a little wider view. I'll pull some thread down. 
Take some ice dubbing. Not too much, just a little pinch. And get it on the get it on the hook. Sometimes it's tough to get on the hook. Uh, put a lot of pressure on it. And you can you can even it out if you want. Not much of a taper, tiny bit of a taper. And then to keep this ice dubbing really tight, what you're going to do is make a loop. So bring your tying thread up, come around, and form a loop like so. Then you take your dubbing spinner. This is after you tied it on the, on the made a noodle of it. Take your dubbing spinner and spin this. And that's going to really tighten up that tighten up that ice dub to make it uh, nice and nice and durable. And then you're going to wind your ice dub thorax. And you don't want to go all the way to the bead here. You want to leave yourself a little bit of room because you're going to have a lot of stuff going on there. So a little bit short of the bead, tie it off. Trim it. And that really looks like peacock curl. Okay. Next are the legs. The original calls for um, partridge hackle, Hungarian partridge. What I'm using here is another hairline product called Buggy Nymph Legs. And I like these for two reasons. One is that they have a speckling to them. And the other is that they're very fine. So uh, the finer you can make these rubber legs, the more they're going to wiggle in the water. And so uh, these are super fine uh, pieces of rubber. If you don't have a speckled, uh, if you don't have these buggy nymph legs, which you probably don't, um, you can use any brown or tan uh fine rubber leg material and you can actually uh, stick uh, stick it in your uh, fly tying vise and stretch it a little bit and then uh, go in with a with a waterproof marker with a permanent marker and you can put speckles on it if you want but this is uh, I, I don't I've eliminated that need here with with this stuff and I'm going to cut a piece, one strand, from this hunk, and then cut it in half, because you 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 only need half of this for each fly. But just cut it in half. So now I got one strand of this speckled rubber stuff, and then. To start it, I like to turn my vise a little bit so I can see the far side and tie it in with a couple turns. Not too tight yet, and you can adjust that just by twisting those a little bit. And then bring your vise back to vertical and loop it around the front and tie it on the near side. And usually I don't get the near side to align properly. So I just align it by hand. And once you got those, once you got those pretty well organized, you can take a couple turns, tight turns over the top to lock them in place. And then you just cut this front loop like so. 
trim both sides a little bit if you want, depending on how long you want those legs. And you've done it all with one piece of rubber leg material. Now, I'm going to pull that thin skin over the top and pull these legs back at the same time and put my thumb on top of it. And being careful that you don't grab the rubber legs, put that thread right up against the bead and it'll slip down a couple of really tight turns. Make sure it's centered on top, which it is. And then you're going to bring your little wing case split straight over the top and do the same thing. Pull straight down so it doesn't, so it stays as a center line there. Like so. And then we're going to put UV cure epoxy on top of this. But I have found that uh, UV cure epoxy is not a panacea and it's definitely not as strong as most people think it is. And where my copper johns always fail is that either this piece of tinsel or the wing case pulls up and then the fly's ruined. It's not gonna, not gonna fish very well. So what you wanna do here is to take these two and fold them back and carefully just come down on top of that rubber, not very far, or that thin skin, not very far, but by folding it back, you've, you've made it much more secure and it won't pull out. And then you wanna come in with your scissors and carefully Snip those and don't snip your rubber legs at this point. So there we are. At this point, you can adjust, you could still move your, adjust your rubber legs a little bit. That looks pretty good, I think. And then take another, another couple tight turns right up against the bead. Whip finish. Right up against the bead. Three, four, five turns. Doesn't really matter here because you're gonna put UV cure. And UV cure holds thread pretty well, but it doesn't, it doesn't tend to hold that thin skin as well as you might think. And then I'm gonna take some uh UV cure, the thin version. Thick will work too. I don't think it works as well. I find it harder to work with. And you're gonna just place a drop or two on top of there and spread it around. Make sure it make sure it gets all over the wing case and into those threads, like so. And it doesn't, even the thin doesn't tend to tend to go anywhere once you put it on. And then hit it with your UV light and make sure you get it at all angles. Nice and close. And make sure you have fresh batteries in your flashlight because uh, weak batteries can definitely uh, affect the degree of curing you get. Make sure you cure it really well. You can turn your vise if you want a little bit and, or turn the light. And there is your rubber leg copper john. So, very durable, easier to tie than using partridge. And uh, these legs give you a pretty good wiggle. It's going to hold up. It's a great fly.
Tom, a few folks have noted supply chain issues on their materials being ordered and coming in. And a couple of folks suggested alternatives for wing cases. And we're wondering if you've ever tied with them or heard of them. Um, somebody suggested using black electrical tape. Another yep. person. You, yeah, you could use black electrical tape. Yeah, absolutely. Um, black electrical tape would work. Um, any black flexible, but yeah, electrical tape be one of the closest things. That should that should work really well. Yep. In fact, I think I'm going to try it myself. And then there any were other. Any other questions? There was a question back to biots, and somebody was curious if you don't like biots just as a tail material, or you just don't like tying with biots in general. I don't like tying with biots in general. Uh, you know, when you when you're winding a quill body, it's they're they're really short and they're really tough to work with. I would rather use a th synthetic quill or even a peacock quill, or a couple of strands of moose mane or just a thread body with a contrasting thread rib. I just personally don't like, don't like working with biots. Uh, I use them on Prince nymphs because, uh, you know, the, the Prince nymph is, is so hard to beat. Although I have tied Prince nymphs using white uh, pieces of rubber for the uh, wing cases, but I don't, I don't think that works quite as well. Uh, so I do, I do use biots on the wing on a, on a Princeton, but I, I, I just don't use them. I don't like them. Can you use round rubber legs for the tail on your copper, John? You can, Dale, but if you can find them uh, small enough, sometimes they come fairly thick. And if you're tying a bigger fly, it's probably okay. Uh, uh, Anthony, uh, once you remove the, the, the paper backing from the thin skin, uh, both sides are the same. It, 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 you, you can tie it either way. It doesn't matter. Both sides are exactly the same. And, oh, yeah. Um, so I know Flagler doesn't use you here. Do you know? think he's sensitive to it because he uses so much of it or is it bad for all of us i don't know i don't know about the uv cure i don't use a lot of it because i prefer head cement but i know that some people get sensitive to it and have allergic reaction it's you know it's got it's got chemicals in it and um, certain people are going to be sensitive to them i i don't appear to be i haven't none of my appendages have fallen off yet so uh but um yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't use it that much. So um, I don't know. I don't know what the issue is. That's something for a combination of a chemist and a, a doctor to tell us about. Scud back. That's in the, yep, Tyler, that's another good thing you could use. Super glue can cause sensitivity. Yeah, I mean, any of these things with solvents, probably head cement can too, although head cement's got this, virtually the same solvent as nail polish. And, you know, pe people use nail polish all the time. Some people do. I don't use, I don't use it that often, just when I'm going out. Then I, then I put nail polish on. But only, only when I'm going out to dinner with my wife. Uh, do you have a video on how to, use that twist like you did with ice dubbing yeah joe you just saw it <laughs> uh, that video this video will be archived on the orvis facebook page and on youtube uh but uh the the video that i saw i think it was yesterday uh drew you saw it too was uh, fly fish food uh did a did a video fly fish food uh produces some great uh some great tying videos so you can you can uh, check it out there. Brown grizzly flutter legs, yeah, they would probably work at particularly in larger sizes. Um, they're they're a little big for a fourteen or a sixteen. That's why I like this particular rubber leg material. But um, it's hard to find really fine spandex. But this this stuff is uh, stuff that I'm using is good. 
Oh, Martin, you ordered the Loom Cube edge lights. It's the best fly tying light ever. They're expensive, but you'll never, you won't regret it. They are, they are terrific. Let's see, any other questions? I see some people use this fly quite a bit. I've had success using Zelon on Prince Nymphs, white for wings and brown for tails. Ah, good. Good, a good substitute for, another good substitute for biops. Uh, Jack uh, asked about more Euro nymphing videos not in the immediate future. I uh, hope uh, there is a there is a whole I I, I I assume you've seen it on on uh, the learning center. There's a whole section uh, of videos that I did with George Daniel uh, a couple years ago on Euro nymphing, and it gives a pretty good pretty good overview of it. I don't know what else I don't know what else uh, you'd want. I mean, it really really George went through the whole the whole technique, but. Um, we don't have any. We don't have any uh, immediate plans for doing your own nymphing videos. And Martin, no, I will not be at the Somerset show this weekend, nor will anybody from Orvis. We have a, we have a travel lockdown at this point. And even if we didn't, I don't think I'd go. I've been. I spent almost two years avoiding getting COVID, and um, although I'm triple vaccinated, uh, I'm not. I'm not really interested in in hanging out with uh 10,000 of my best friends breathing in my face. <laughs> I'm not gonna go. I love the I love the New Jersey show. I love it. I love it, but I'm not I'm going to have to pass this year. Uh ever use feather tuff for coating feathers for wings? Brandon, I haven't used uh I haven't used feather tuff, but I've used uh uh, a, a spray stuff called artist fixative which they use for uh spraying on charcoal uh drawings to uh, keep them from smudging and um, i think it's the same as that that feather tough stuff have you had any experience with nymphs and ice fishing william I, I haven't, but I know that when we used to sell the weighted nymph selection at Orvis many years ago, there were ice fishermen that would would buy uh, that would would buy nymphs, and that reminds me of a joke. Reminds me of a joke. We got time for a joke. This is my this is my best ice fishing joke. So there's two old Vermonters sitting in a diner, and uh, they're, they're just chatting away as old Vermonters will at a diner over coffee in the morning. And one of them says to the other, you going ice fishing this year? The other one says, nope, my wife lets me drink at home. That's my ice fishing joke. Uh, I don't know what the next tie-off is going to be with Tim, Jamie. Uh, it's my turn and I have to figure it out. I have to figure it out. Ralph, good. Ralph, I'm glad you're experimenting with color variations. I would highly advise that because um, I use this red one in Vermont, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, um, Maryland, and it's worked for me. But uh, you never know. Your your local streams might have uh, might have fish that prefer a different color, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. You know, uh, Drew was saying he puts a blue collar on his nymphs and. There aren't many things that are blue in uh, in nature, at least not uh, in in the insect world. So um, we don't know we don't know what fish see in these colors, but uh, it's definitely worth experimenting with them. How about a pattern with CDC in it? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, Sean. Maybe I'll maybe Flagler and I'll tie something with CDC in it. When and where is the Lancaster show? Anthony, you can find out where the Lancaster show is by going to www.google.com. 
and search for Lancaster Fly Fishing Show. I don't know when it is. Oh, Andrew, it's too late to vote for my podcast. I think the voting is over. But thank you for thank you for the reminder. I don't think I won. Okay. Any other questions besides um, using me as a search engine? <laughs> Sorry about that, Anthony. I didn't mean to be a wise guy, but that's what I would do if I were going to try to find out when the Lancaster show was. I don't have it at uh, the top of my head. Oh, voting is still going on. It really? Oh. Well, if you guys want to want to give me a vote uh, on uh, on Facebook, there is uh, the Drew. Do you know what that? I'm going to try to drop the link in here, and everybody should okay. go. Uh, it'll be in the comments. Yeah, I'm up for a, a podcast of the year award from the uh, Outdoor Media Conference. There's not that much difference between a tungsten bead nymph or a tungsten ice jig with panfish plastic. Both will work for more movement. Tie nymph with CDC or saw tackle. Cool, Frank. So you use them for ice fishing. Neat. Yeah, I imagine they'd work. Imagine they'd work pretty well. All right, everyone. Well, I think um, I think we've run out of questions. Ah, Ed. Ed looked it up. The Lancaster show is March fifth and sixth. <laughs> uh, are you aware of the fly fishing memes? Featuring you, it's basically you as a fly fishing Jesus. Yeah, I saw that, <laughs> Jacob. I I don't really look at I don't really look at Reddit and stuff like that very often. I'm not a big fan of social media, but my buddies like Drew will occasionally send me one when they find it, and I'm I'm always very flattered. <laughs> Pretty funny. My wife my wife thinks they're funny too. Uh, no, Burker, I've never, I've never fished in Iceland. I would like to, but I never have. Send me a plane ticket and I'll come. All right, everyone. Well, it, um, I hope that, uh, I hope that some of you tie along. I hope that, I uh, hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it. And thank you for, thank you for tuning in. It really is, uh, means a lot to us that you, that you spend an hour every afternoon uh, watching these tying sessions and love your comments and um, appreciate your comments and suggestions and questions. And um, I will see you on next Monday. I'm going to be tying with my buddy, Henry Cowan. He's not going to be tying. He's going to be kibitzing. Uh, but I'm tying one of Henry Cowan's uh, bait fish patterns that can be used in both fresh and, and salt water. So um, it's always fun to, it's always fun to have somebody have somebody uh, uh, to uh, talk me through their their own personal pattern. So um, that'll be fun. Looking forward to that. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. And we will see you next Monday.